we thankful and we are praising God even now uh, for this marvelous and magnificent day uh, that he has granted us to see. Uh, he could have easily made this day uh, without us just as easily as he made it with us. And so we ought to rejoice in the name of the Lord for the Lord is good and the Lord is merciful. And so we thank him and we praise his name even now. So we're grateful again on this Sunday morning. This is a Sunday that we've never seen before, and we're just grateful to God that he's allowed us to see this day. Uh, we're going to have a word of prayer, uh, and then we'll ask our minister of music to lead us uh, in a song, and then we'll come back uh, and share with, with you what God has given us. Good morning to you, uh, New Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church. We're so glad that you tuned in uh, with us on this third Sunday in April. We're grateful to God for you having a chance to view this broadcast. And then for others who are viewing it as well, we are thankful to God for you for having an opportunity to come and tune in. We're glad you allowed us to come into your homes on this morning. Uh, right now, we're going to have a word of prayer, and then we're going to turn it over to our minister of music for a song. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, our Maker, our Ruler, uh, our Sovereign Savior, we thank you even now another chance to come and praise your name. Thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for last night lying down early this morning arising. God, we thank you for your sovereignty, and we thank you for your mercy and your grace. And God, we ask even now that you would hold us in the palm of your hand. Uh, we know you're able. You're an able God, and there is no failure in you. And we thank you for this day. Now, God, we pray that you would uh, arrest our minds and our attention uh, to the worship experience, to those who are viewing us on this morning. Uh, we pray now that you continue to guide in God and grace them with your presence, your power, and your peace. Uh, God, we pray that you continue the hedge that you've had around their homes and their lives and their help. And God, we thank you even now for the opportunity to stand before these people and declare thy unsearchable riches to God, how we do thank you now for the word that's going to go forth on this morning. Uh, we pray, God, even now that you will release your word with power uh, and conviction uh, on this morning. And whatever you choose to do in and through us on today, we'll be careful to give your name praise. And God, we pray for Sister Deborah Wallace on this morning, uh, for the home going of her mother who made her exit uh, from earth into eternity on this week. Uh, we ask you, oh God, even now to lift that family in the mighty name of Jesus. And as they get well, we're ready to say farewell to their mom. Uh, we pray that you will strengthen them with might. And then God, for others who have lost loved ones, we pray for them as well. Uh, we lift up the Bullock family. Uh, we lift up Sister Patterson's family. Uh, we lift up uh, even now Hilton family, uh, Hilton Tarv and his family, God. And we thank you even now for Louise Thompson who laid her father to rest just a few weeks ago. Praise you now for your power and your strength that you've given that family. And God, we pray even now that you continue to watch over them and guide them and guard them as only you can. It's in the marvelous and magnificent and majestic name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And tonight, back now, we're going to turn you to the hands of our marvelous minister of music in the capable hands of Brother Chad Locke. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise right where you are. Even though it's cloudy outside, it may look great outside, but we serve a great God. We serve a true and living God. And this song that we just sing this declares that he is great. Come on, right where you are, say, how great is our God? Let's go. How great is our God? You can clap your home. Sing with me.
They, 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 it was literally said they had God within them. All right. They had God yeah. surrounding them. They had God upholding them. They had God lifting them. And, and when, you, when you have God in you and through you and around you, you can be enthusiastic in the midst of whatever's going on in your life. Yeah. Oh, there, there's a word. I don't, there's a word that's here. Uh, that, that's that's couched and prompted and cataloged uh, here uh, in the third chapter of Habakkuk. Uh, here in our passage today, uh, Habakkuk is the prophet uh, who comes out and he has a message. A message. He has a message for uh, Judah. Right. Uh, and, and you notice that the text opens up. If you notice in chapter 1 of Habakkuk, the, the Bible says that Habakkuk has a, a burden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, had, he has a burden. H Habakkuk had a, had a burden. And I, I told you. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, not only did Habakkuk have a burden, Nahum had a, a burden. He opens up with a, a burden. And then Malachi chapter 1 opens up with a, with a burden. And, 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 so, and so whenever there, 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 there is redundancy throughout Scripture, you, you, you want to grapple that, you want to circle that because burdens are real. All right. yeah. And, 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 and burdens are not something that, 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 that we can just easily bypass. So, so, so burdens have to be dealt with. I don't care how, how blessed you claim to be, a burden knows your name. All right. All right. I don't care how, how, how saved you say you are, All right. a burden knows your name. Yeah. And not only does a burden know your name, it knows your nature. It, right. it, it knows what you can take. It knows just how much you can bear. And so burdens come to remind us uh, that we ain't all that we think we are. We're not all that in a bag. Burdens will let you know that you're not where you ought to be. But a burden will let you know. Yeah, that you need the hand of the Lord to continue to guide you and guard you and grace you in these times of, of chaotic circumstances. So, so Habakkuk comes, and, 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 and Habakkuk comes uh, uh, with, a, with a message. Now notice, uh, ha Habakkuk is not like the other prophets. Hab Habakkuk, most prophets came and spoke on behalf of God. Uh, uh, the, the prophet, the, the, the Nabi in, the, in Hebrew, one who, who says what God wants them to say, one who brings a message. Uh, but, but, but Habakkuk, uh, uh, seems to be different from the other prophets who came to deliver a word from God uh, for people to repent and turn from their wicked ways. H Habakkuk comes uh, with a message from Israel uh, for God to have mercy on, on them. H Habakkuk comes on behalf of, of Israel. Have I got a witness here? And, and so, so Habakkuk comes uh, and, and, and shares. Now, now, now notice Habakkuk comes and, and Habakkuk is upset. Uh, Habakkuk is not only uh, upset, he's disturbed. His whole world has been turned upside down by, by the, 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 uh, the trouble that Judah it's been going through. Right. He, he's concerned with the sins uh, and the waywardness of a nation. All right. and, 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 and Habakkuk comes and he's wondering why God has not done anything about their waywardness. Sound like some of us when we, we we want to sit God on for we yeah, yeah. we just keep wondering when is God gonna get so and so they they they, they know they ain't just not doing what God when is God gonna answer and do something what 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 Habakkuk is wondering uh, when is God going to do something he, he he's concerned so Habakkuk has some 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 questions about uh, about God he 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 comes with a he comes with a with, with a message. He, he wants to know when God is going to, to do something about Judah's waywardness. Now notice the prophet's problem. The, the prophet's problem is uh, that Judah seemed to be getting away, getting away uh, with all of their sins and iniquities and God is, is, is seemed to be sitting on his hands. Right. Yeah. And the prophet is wondering when is God going to do something about that Waywardness, uh -huh. but but now but now let, can I just say this to you? God, God, the, the good news is God does not mind us asking Him questions. All right, all right. Yeah, don't don't let nobody tell you you're not supposed to ask God. No all of us got some unanswered questions. Yeah. Yeah. 
all of us have some unresolved issues in our in our lives. But 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 God does not mind us asking Him right. question. That's the good news. Yeah. Well, the bad news is He doesn't have to answer any yeah. question yeah. All right. that you ask Him. All right. yeah. Have a God witness here. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, he, he does not He does not have to answer any any question that we that we ask Him. So I wanna I wanna look at the prophets. Uh, problems, and then I want to look at the prophet's uh, prayer, but then I want to look at the prophet's promise, and I'll, I'll just take my seat out there. Right. After right. that. I want to, I, I want to take in, I want to peep in on Habakkuk because Habakkuk seems to be dealing with some chaotic circumstances, like we are are in today. We we, we are dealing with this, uh, this 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 pandemic, this this, this pandemic that we are going through, uh, and, and we're wondering. Uh, when, when is God going to relieve us? When is God going going to free us? When, when when are we going to be able to socialize again? We we have many questions. We when, when are we going to be able to go to our stores and shop again? When when are we going to be able to go to the parks again? When when, when are we going to be able to come back to church again and worship God and cooperate? That's, when are we going to be able to do some of the things we were doing prior to this pandemic? When when are we going to be able to have some relief in our life? When, when are we going to be able to put away these masks? that we have to wear. When are we going to be able to come together again? We got some questions. Right. Come, come on in here. We, we got some questions. No, no, we got some questions. This, this is some real stuff. This, this is some real stuff we're dealing with. And Habakkuk is dealing with some real issues. Right, right. He, he wants to know when is God going to, going to deal with you. But, but, but notice, no, no, notice, no, notice, no, notice uh, the prophet's uh, uh, announcement about uh, the troubles of Judah. But now notice, no, notice also his astonishment in the process All right. that God has taken. All right. All right. Uh, he, 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 he's astonished by, by the slowfulness uh, of God. He, right. he, he, he's, he's, he's astonished uh, by the turtle walk of, of God. Right. He, 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 he wants God to hurry up. Uh, and correct his people. He wants God to hurry up and put them back in line. But but he's astonished at the process of of God. But notice, but notice, uh, not only is he astonished about the process, but he's he's a little bit uh, 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 the, the appointment uh, of God's process. God, God tells him that I, I, I'm already in the process of taking care of your answer, your question. He said, I, I, listen, he said, listen, he said, I'm already in the process of, of, of building or growing a team of, of the Babylonians of who's going to take Judah captive. And, and, and he says they, they, they're going to take them captive away from that that they are familiar with, away from their homes, away from their possessions. He said, I've got a remedy. Right. He said, I'm already, now I'm going to get ready. I'm already, while you yet talking. While you yet wondering, I'm already behind the scenes making ready for Judah uh, judgment. But then notice the prophet, as soon as God tells him uh, what he's in the process of doing, he, he, he has some concerns about how God and who God is going to use uh, to correct Judah. He said, no, you, you, you're not telling me you're going to use uh, the Babylonians. They, 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 they're worse than, than Judah. Wow. They, they're worse than my people. They, 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 are, they, they, they are worse hoodlums than the ones you're trying to correct. But, but, but God said, I'm going to deal with them as well, but I'm going to use them first uh, to get Judah straight, and then I'm going to deal with, with their sins and with their iniquities. Now, now watch, watch the text because, because we, we, we move, we move uh, from, from chapter 1 and chapter 2. But then, but then, but then uh, the, the prophet comes in chapter 3, and, and he seems to have gotten his act together. All right. he, he's been concerned. He's been weary. Uh, this, he, he, he's been in the dumps. And, and, and now when he moves to chapter 3, after having a conversation with God, he, he moves to chapter 3 after, after it seems like after he, he, a fear has been replaced with, with faith. All right. Weary has been yeah. transformed into worship. He, he, he seems to be he seems to be on the on the right track now. He he comes in in chapter three and chapter three 
uh, uh, Habakkuk has a has a prayer. Right. Right. Now, now notice, no, notice, because whenever uh, we find ourselves uh, in situations that seem to be uh, bigger than us, we need to go to someone that's bigger than our problem. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whenever you get to the point where you, you, you at, you're at a standstill and don't feel that you can handle what's in front of you, you need to t talk to somebody uh, who's able to handle that that's in front of you and behind you and around you. You need to talk to God who's able to handle anything that we're going through. So the prophet, so the prophet comes in chapter 3. And the prophet seems to have his, have his act together. But watch what, he, watch what he, he opens up. He opens up. Now, now notice... No, no, notice, he wasn't uh, a, a, a preacher like Jeremiah and Zephaniah. He, 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 he was a prophet. He comes with an oracle, but, but, but he moves from an oracle to pray. All right, all right. Uh, he, has a, he has a message <clears throat> in chapter 1, but then he moves from his message of judgment and the manner of the judgment and to the, and to the, the means of, of mercy. Uh, he, he, he comes. He comes in chapter three uh, with with a prayer. Now, now watch this because chapter three opens up. It says a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon Shiganor. Uh, Shiganor is, is the idea. Of, uh, uh, Shiganor is a reference to a tune. Right. It's, it's it's a musical note. Right. Uh, it, it seems that that, that Habakkuk have have learned how to move from from weariness and and worry to worship and and not only that but he but but he comes and he wants to worship and he wants everything around him and everybody uh, in the midst of him to worship with him now, now, now notice no, notice notice this this text and I I don't want to get too happy now, no, notice this 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 text here because he, 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 he has a, a musical note. It's a, it's, it's a musical note. Now, now he says he has a, a prayer. Uh -huh. the, the, the word is tefillah here in the Hebrew. Tefillah is the prayer. Uh, but but it, comes, it comes with not only supplication, but it comes, it's, it, 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 it comes with a hymn. Right. Uh, it, it, this is a hymn that Habakkuk uh, is lifting up uh, uh, before before God and before the people. Now, now there's several musical notes in this in this passage because if you notice in verse three, there, there's a musical note. Selah is a is a musical note. That, that's in chapter. That's in verse three. But verse nine has a word called Selah in there, and that's 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 a musical note in chapter. And verse thirteen has a musical note in that. That's that's Selah again. So so, so that there are several musical notes within this within this passage, and so. Habakkuk seems to be saying uh, to you and I that whenever you get into a situation that's chaotic and beyond your the wildest imagination, he said you ought to learn how to pray and sing a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, 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 many of us are singing, but we're singing the wrong. We're singing the wrong song. Yeah, I, I'm not saying we're not singing, but we're singing. Uh, the wrong song. We 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 we're, we're singing, but we we got a tune, but it ain't it, it's not the right tune. All right. It, it's not tuned into what God is trying to get us to to understand and what God is trying to get us to to see. And and so Habakkuk comes in chapter three, uh, and he says in chapter three uh, when he gets to this prayer, he, he he wants us to notice not only the prayer but the realization. Of the prayer, this is real stuff. It's, it's happening, and and, and Habakkuk is not playing around. He he, he is concerned uh, with how Judah is going uh, to be judged by the Babylonians. But in, in spite of all of it, he's trusting in in God. He he, he continues to trust in in God, and, and there is no greater time uh, that we should be trusting Him, but in times like these. Anybody can trust him when the sun is is shining. Anybody can trust him when the bank account uh, is full. Anybody can trust him uh, when the bank account is in the black. But how well do you trust him when the bank account is in is in the red? How, how well do you? How well do you 
Do you trust him when you have more bills than you have, have money? How, how well do you trust him when you got more sickness than you have insurance to cover the sickness? How, how, how well do you trust him when you have more problems than you have answers? How, how well do you trust him? Are, are you like those at IBM with your head down and, and then stressed out and those who are having high blood pressure, heart attack? with the circumstances even though they are chaotic how do you deal with you are a child of God no, you, you, you testify yeah, yeah you I'm talking to you you testify that the Lord has saved me the Lord is my shepherd I shall not I won't I, you, you're the one saying that the Lord uh, takes care of me you, you, you're the one saying that, that the Lord is my, my shield and my book you are the one that saved for God I live and for God I but when times like these that are chaotic come in our lives, how well do we lift up the name of, of the Lord? How, how well can we? How well can we praise Him when situations don't seem to be getting any any better? How, how well can we praise Him when it don't seem like we're going to ever uh, be able to get rid of this pandemic that we're living in? How, how well? Praise him, but when the situation seems to be getting worse rather than getting better. Well, I, I think Habakkuk has a has a word for us uh, us here. Habakkuk uh, has a word for us here. He he says he says in verse in verse seventeen. Watch watch the watch watch the uh, watch the envision of of Habakkuk in verse 17 not only does there is there an envision but there seem to be uh, uh Habakkuk seem to be extolling God he, he, not only does he embrace him but he extols God in, in in verse 17 and 18 and then and then he embraces uh, the situation that he's in can, can I just show it to you in verse 17 he said although <laughs> the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vines and uh, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield not meat, and the flock shall be cut off from the field, and there shall be no herd in the stall. Now that's what he's envisioning. He's envisioning things getting worse than rather than getting better. All right, all right, all right. But, but, but watch how he envisions now. Now in the Eastern culture, in, in agricultural terms, he's saying if there is no more meat in the stall, if, if there's no more herd that we can gain meat, if there's no more, if there's no more olives on on the tree. Right. He envisions things getting worse than getting better. All right. He says it's, it's just a possibility. And maybe that's what something some of you that's looking at me now, maybe, maybe you need to just start envisioning things getting worse than getting better. Wow. Have I got a witness here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we may all start saying maybe this pandemic going to last throughout the rest of this year. All right. But, but, but in spite of that, we, we know a God who's over all pandemics. We, we, we know a God who can handle the pandemics and viruses of our world. Now, now watch it better. He said, it, it looks like it may get worse, but he said, even uh, if God chooses it, it could get worse. All right. e even if God says it's not going to get any better. Watch it better. He, he, he says, watch this now. He, he, he says, in spite of what I'm envisioning, Oh, uh, he says, he says, he said, yet I, I will rejoice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he said, if it don't get any, any better. He, 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 he looks at the reality of the situation because, ah, uh, he said, it may not get any, any better. He, he looks at the realization of the situation. And then, not, not only is it a prayer a realization, but listen, it's a prayer of revival. I have a got a witness here. It, 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 it's, it's a prayer of, of not only uh, a, a prayer, a realization and a prayer of, of revival, but it's a prayer of remembrance. Because in verse 3 and verse 7, he said, we all remember how good God has been to us in times past. We, 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 we can, you know, he, he got reasons here why he can say what he's saying when God have brought you through some of the darkest days of your life. You ought to have a testimony of triumph. You, you, you ought not allow uh, dark days and chaotic circumstances and, and, and mixed up uh, uh, messes to mess up your mind to the point that you cannot lift up your hands and praise the Lord. You, you, 
asking you all to be able to lift up your hands just based upon what he's done for you in times past. Have I got a witness here? Not, not, not what he's doing right now, but what he's, what he's done in times, in times past. We, we ought to have a faith file that we can pull out <laughs> on some days when our heads are down. We, 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 we ought to uh, we are people who ought to have a faith file that we can pull out and, and go back and say, I remember when I didn't have a job. And I didn't know how I was going. I was going to make But the God I serve brought me through. It, it ought to be a faith file when you look into your life and remember uh, how wretched you were in God. Turn your, your life around. It ought to be some single mother out there that can you pull out your faith file and remember when you were struggling with your children and trying to find ways to feed them and clothe them and nurture them but, but you kept praying and trusting God and God came through. You, you ought to have a faith file. Have I got a witness here? And, and that faith file ought to be able to carry you through some of the darkest days of your, of your life. Well, Rebecca seems to remember the goodness of God. And in spite of what he's going through, Rebecca uh, comes, he has a vision, and visions, things not getting any better. But in other words, in other, in other words, I may not get no better. But I'm going to extol God. I'm going to praise God. I, I'm going to lift up his, his name. In fact, I'm going to embrace God. Have I got a witness here? And so he said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yes. That reminds me of the summit saying, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my, in my mouth. Right. Look, notice, let me, let, let, let me, let, let me slow down right, right here because uh, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to skip this word rejoice. Because many of us are, are gloomy and many of us are, are sad and many of us are despondent and many of us are disappointed and many of us are depressed. I, I don't want to run across this word. <laughs> rejoice. Have I got a witness here? Well, well, well the first time the word rejoice was used, it was used uh, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 2. You remember uh, Hannah. Uh, had, a, had needed, wanted a child and she kept praying and asking God to grant her a child in chapter 1. Right. Uh, you know, she kept asking and begging and pleading uh, with God to give her a boy child in chapter in chapter 1. Well, well, well in chapter ch chapter 1, uh, at the end of that chapter, he gives her a boy child by the name of Samuel. And then chapter 2, chapter 2 opens up in, in 1 Samuel uh, with her giving praise and rejoicing for what the Lord had given her. It was one of the darkest times in her life but when God came through for her. The Bible declares that she spent the whole second chapter giving his name praise. She had a request in chapter 1 but she didn't begin to praise his name in chapter 2. The Bible declares she rejoiced in chapter 2. And so much so that she takes up the whole chapter rejoicing about the goodness of God. Have I got a witness here? Well, this word uh, rejoice here, uh, it, it is the Hebrew word alaz. And alaz literally means <laughs> to jump for joy. This word alaz in the Hebrew really means to not only jump for joy, it means to spin around. It, it, it means that what God has done for you, you ought to be able to jump for joy. You, you ought to be able to spin around. Have I got a witness here? You, you, you remember, uh, and I believe this is where Peter got his word from. In, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6, he said, Wherein we greatly rejoice. All right. Greatly rejoice is the Greek word agaliao. Agaliao literally means to jump for her. Jump for joy. Yeah, yeah. And I just believe that uh, Peter borrowed this word from Habakkuk, uh, who literally says that we ought to jump for joy. All right. we, we ought to have something that we can yeah. jump for. Yeah. We ought to have something that we can spin around for. Yeah. And for, for Habakkuk uh, says, I will rejoice 
uh, in the Lord. Not in uh, what I have in the bank. I I'm going to rejoice. In other words, before uh, my supplemental check uh, comes up in the mail. Uh, I'm going to rejoice before uh, uh, the treasury releases my stimulus check. I I'm going to rejoice uh, even if my stimulus check don't show up. I've got something to rejoice for. For the Lord has been good to me. Have I got a witness here? So Habakkuk says, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Notice he uses the personal pronoun, my. My, my. my is not only a personal pronoun, but it is a possessive pronoun. In other words, God is mine and I'm God. He, he used a personal possessive pronoun. He said, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. And when you look at salvation in the New Testament, it's always related to God delivering us from sin. But uh, when you look at uh, salvation in the Old Testament, uh, it, it, it reveals deliverance. It, it, it talks about not only deliverance, it talks about rescue. Right. Salvation in, in the Hebrew really means safety. And so he says, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord because he is able to deliver me. And not only is he able to deliver me, he's able to rescue me. Is there anybody here viewing this broadcast ever had God to deliver you? Uh, you, you? You thought you were gone. You thought you were going to be going down for the last time. But God rescued you. God took you by the hand and lifted you up out of the depth of despair. Then you ought to be one of those that's viewing this broadcast. Ought to have your hands up in the air. You in your own private home, so you ought to be able to spin around. You ought to be able to jump a little bit. Have I got a witness here? I, I don't care who's looking at you when you think about the goodness of God and all that He's done for you. It, it, it'll put some jumping and it, it'll put some leaping in your step. Have I got a witness here when you think about what God uh, is doing right now in your life? It, it ought to put some joy in your life. Have better say, I will rejoice. Uh, in the salvation of my God. Have I got a witness here? He says rejoice. The apostle Paul reminds us in Philippians 4 and 4 he says rejoice in the Lord I say. He said again I say rejoice in the Lord. Have I got a witness here? We, we, we ought to learn how to rejoice in the Lord. Have I got a witness here? James, James is trying to break in on the little sermon here, but I'm trying to, James, I'm trying to, I'm trying to close this, this little sermon here, but J J James is tapping me on my shoulder and saying, Bell, don't close before you, you remind them of what I told them in James chapter 1 verse verse 2. Have, have I got a witness here? J J J J James uh, tell, tells us in James chapter 1 verse 2 uh, J J J James says count it all. <laughs> count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Have I got a witness here N knowing that the knowing that the that the trying of your faith working patience. Have I got a witness here but let patience have her perfect work. Warning nothing. J -J James said, don't leave them without telling them to count it all, John. Have I got a witness here? And that word count is, is not the word we use in mathematical terms. This, this word count here in the Greek uh, literally means uh, it means to let him have, let him be your captain of the joy. Have I got a witness here? This word uh, count hagaiomai literally means captain. It really means God. It literally means to lead. James said, tell them, Bell, don't, don't allow the coronavirus to be captain over their life. Don't, don't let the coronavirus lead them into despair. Don't, don't, don't let this coronavirus and this pandemic uh, that we're living in, that uh, we're going through uh, to govern uh, how you're going uh, to praise the Lord. He said, in the midst of what you're going through, you ought to take the lead in your life. You ought to be governing your life. You ought not allow circumstances to, to make legislative uh, uh, decisions over your joy. He, he says you ought to take charge over your joy. And have I got a witness here? I, I'm trying to, to hurry up and close uh, this little sermon here. But, but I, 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 Paul 
is trying to break in on my, my sermon. I, I've already let James break in, but, but, but Paul said, Bill, can you remind them of Romans 5 and 3? But, but not only so, but we glory. We glory in tribulation. Have I got a witness here? But not only so, but we glory in tribulation because we know something. We glory in tribulation also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Have I got a witness here? Have I got a witness here? We, we know that it's working for us and not against us. Have I got a witness here because we can rejoice because we know that the trials that we're going through, the chaotic circumstances that we are facing is working better for us for the making us better for the Lord than is making us better for the Lord. And, and so when, 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 when Habakkuk here talks about the, he rejoiced uh, in the Lord also, uh, Habakkuk here says uh, that uh, not only does he rejoice, but now I want you to take a look at the, the results of worship. When you worship something, it's bound to happen when you worship God. I, I tell you, when you Put aside your weariness and put wearing and your weariness and, and your wicked and weakness and start worshiping God. Worship will do something that weary cannot do. I say worship will do something that wickedness cannot do. Worship will do something for you that weariness will never do. Worship will turn things around for you. Have I got a witness here? You'll have a whole new perspective on what you're going through once you worship. Have I got a witness here? But you got to worship him with all your mind, all your heart, and all your soul. You got to worship God. And so when, when Habakkuk worships God, now, now watch what happens when he finally worships God. The Bible says in chapter 3, verse uh, uh, 19, uh, the Bible says, the Lord God is my strength. You will gain strength once you worship him. Have I got a witness here? Something about worshiping God is something about giving God all you got. It's, it's something about putting aside what's bothering you. It's something about putting aside what's going on in your own life and giving all the glory to God. It's something about worshiping God in the midst of what you're going through. God it wants us to worship Him. Have I got a witness here? And the Bible said that the Habakkuk the sins that God. God is my strength. Now God started out as his salvation. Have I got a witness here? The other words, the God who delivers, the God who knows how not only to deliver and rescue, but the God who's able uh, to turn me things around. Uh, he's given me safety. Now watch what Habakkuk says. He, he says here, but the, the God is my God of strength. Now watch what the God will do when you worship him. Habakkuk said, my God will give me, make me hinds feet. Have I got a witness here? He said he'll make me hinds feet. John, he says that because it's a Hebrew idiom, which literally means agility. It's a Hebrew idiom that literally means that, that God will not only give me agility, he'll give me speed. He'll give me sure footness. God will give me what I need to handle the struggles and trials that's ahead of me. When he looks at, at this verse, uh, Habakkuk is thinking about the mountains. Uh, he's thinking about the, the geography and the topography of Israel. Uh, because Israel, uh, the, the hills were 400 feet below sea level and 1,300 feet above sea level. So they had some mountains in the hills. Uh, they had some mountains and, and, the, and if you read about the uh, uh, the, the, the Abed uh, uh, goat uh, who lived up in the mountains uh, the, the Abed goat could stand uh, on the very hill and uh, on the very cliff of the hill and, and the reason he could stand like that because he, he had some feet uh, uh, that could hold him up uh, when he wouldn't hold others up. Uh, the, the, the Abed goat uh, could stand on some hills, could stand on the edge of a cliff and, and would not fall off. And Habakkuk sees himself uh, with hind feet. Uh, he sees himself with some deer feet. Uh, he can see himself fleeing from what's going on in his life. Uh, like a deer fleeing in the nighttime of a forest, uh, snowing and raining uh, in the nighttime of a forest. Uh, Habakkuk can see himself fleeing from uh, the, the, the hell uh, hounds on this trail. Uh, and when he says that uh, God will give me 
hinds feet. And not only that, he will make me to walk on my high places. Have I got a witness here? Another Hebrew idiom that, that literally means that God will, will give me a, a, a challenge. And in my challenge, he'll give me a responsibility. And not only that, but uh, he'll give me something to handle my hardships. Because God knows just how much I can bear. And, and so Habakkuk sees himself as an Ibeck go on the, in the hills uh, and the hilltop, uh, standing on the hills, uh, standing on the edge of the cliff. Uh, but in spite of all that's going on beneath him, uh, the Ibeck go can stand in the midst of the storm. Uh, the Ibeck go can stand in the midst of blowing winds. Uh, the Ibeck go can go where no other animal can go. Uh, because when he gets in trouble, uh, the Ibeck go can go up into the hills uh, where other animals and predators cannot reach him. Uh, and so what I'm trying to tell you this morning that God has a place that you can go in the midst of what's going on with you in the midst of what's happening in your life God has some wings that he can put under your life have I got a witness here he, you can hide yourself in his pavilion you can hide yourself under his wings you got a place where your enemy can't get to you you got a place where hell can't get to you you got a place where harm can't get to you you got a place where hardship can't bother you you got a place where the coronavirus cannot bother you you got a place where the pandemic cannot disturb you you got a place where God has reserved just for you I hear the psalmist say God is our refuge our present help in the time of trouble have I got a witness here let me close this little sermon here but as Habakkuk here he said that God has a place uh, that he'll put me in high places uh, but not only that but Habakkuk seems uh, to get happy right here wait a minute here Habakkuk says next uh, he called on the chief singer and on my string instrument uh, he seemed to be calling in the choir director he seemed to be calling in the minister of music. He seemed to be calling in the instruments all in the area. I bet they said, let's have some church in spite of what's going on. Let's have some church in spite of the chaotic conditions and circumstances in our lives. Let's have some church. I bet they seem to be saying, take it away, cry the record. Sing me a song. Give him a song. That'll lift up bow down head. Give me a song that'll lift up broken heart. I better seem to be saying it's time to worship. What is your situation telling you to do? Is your circumstances telling you to stay home? Cover up your head and don't answer the phone. Is your circumstances telling you that it ain't gonna get no better? Is your circumstances dictating to you? Whether you'll get up on Sunday morning and praise the Lord. Is your circumstances telling you you can't praise the Lord because you're not in this place? But wherever you are, whether you're in your living room, whether you're in your car, whether you're in your kitchen, you can praise the Lord. You can praise His name. You can praise His name. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Have ever seen the same? I'm calling on the choir director. I told you it's a hymn of praise. I told you it's a hymn of prayer. You can't have a hymn of prayer that you bring in the choir director. We need a choir director. Have I got a witness here? And he says on the string instrument. He says play on the string instrument. I hear the day from and saying everything that have bread ought to pray the Lord. Everything that have bread ought to praise the Lord. Now wait a minute before I take my seat. I notice something else in this text. Have ever seen the rejoicing in the Lord? Can I tell you what? It does not seem that his praise was rehearsed. His praise was unrehearsed. He didn't have time to rehearse what he's going to do. He didn't have time to rehearse how he's going to praise the Lord. He gives 
give him unrehearsed praise. Have I got a witness here? And not only is it unrehearsed, it's unrestricted. Have I got a witness here? Whether I'm down in the valley or up on the mountain top, I'm gonna praise the Lord. I'm gonna give him all I got. I'm gonna tell him thank you in the midst of what I'm going through. And not only was it unrehearsed, and not only was it unrestricted, but can I tell you, it was unshamed. He was not ashamed of his praise. And if you've been a child of God, and you know God has been good to you, you ought not be ashamed to praise his name. You ought not be ashamed to tell him thank you. Ain't he all right? I say, ain't he all right? You ought to tell him thank you. Let me close, but I got a little story that I want to close with. Had a chronic health condition. She was going down and soon to see her last days. She called her pastor, called him to her house. The pastor came to see about the old lady. Her health was going down. He walked in the room. He asked her how she was doing. She gave him a smile. She waved at her pastor. She said, Pastor, I'm doing pretty good. He said, I hear you're doing real bad. She said, no, Pastor, that's what the prognosis says. That's what the doctor says. But I'm doing pretty good. I'm smiling. I'm, I'm thanking God for days he's given me before. He said, she said, I'm, I'm praising God for what he's done for me. And the pastor began to ask her, well, why are you smiling so much? She said, Pastor, the reason I'm smiling is because I got a little robin that's always on the outside of my door. He said, you know that robin, that robin bird, it sings in the rain. She said, Pastor, did you know that robin sing in the rain? She said, why the spot of storm silences other birds? That little robin keeps on singing in the rain. That robin sings in the rain. That robin sings in the sunshine. That robin sings when it's snowing. That robin sings when the hail is coming down. That robin sings when other birds are silent. And say, God, I can smile because that bird reminds me the same God that created the little bitty bird. He created me. So in my circumstances, I've learned how to shout sing in the midst of my storms. Sing, 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 sing. Ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right? Grab the person by the hand. I know you're standing by somebody. Somebody may be sitting with you. Grab your husband by the hand. Grab your daughter by the hand. Grab your son by the hand. Grab your mother by the hand. Margo, I know you're looking. Grab you about the hand and tell her God ain't through. God ain't through. Tell her God ain't through. Tell him thank you. I said tell him thank you. Deborah Wallace, I know you're way in Arkansas, but God told me to tell you he's the same God that took care of you in Dallas and he'll take care of you in Arkansas. Deborah, hold on. I said, hold on, Louise Thompson, if you're looking at the broadcast, I know your father made his exit from earth into eternity, but the same God that took care of him for 90 some odd years will take care of you. Hold on, I said, hold on, hold on, I said, hold on, help is on the way, help is on the way, hold on, I said, hold on. The psalmist said, I shall look to the hill which cometh all my help and my help coming from the Lord. Hold on. I said, hold on. Hold on. I said, hold on. Hold on. I said, hold on. Hold on.
Hold on. Hold on just a little while. Just a little while. Just a little while longer. Hold on. Hold, hold on. Remaining calm in your chaotic circumstance. You don't, you don't have to lose it when you when you got God in you and through you. In fact, you you will equip to make it through uh, this chaotic circumstance in which we live. If you are a child of God, then you you will protect it. Because you have Jesus Church uh, in Dallas. 
it's not the only church in this world. Uh, but we know other pastors. You want a biblically Bible-based church uh, that teaches Bible. Uh, and we can recommend you to that church. Though the church is open, maybe one can make a baptism Christian experience if you hear. If you hear, now is the time. Come on, Brother Jay. Particularly uh, what belongs.
belongs to him. This is not a time for us to be taking shortcuts and, and, and cutting and pinching off what belongs to him. You all make sure God gets everything uh, that belongs to, to him. Amen. Amen. Uh, so at this time, we're, we're going to uh, get out your uh, envelopes, your iPads. And many of you will be giving to on Giplify. Website uh, NPRMBC uh, Dallas.org. If you want to give to, to us, we're praying, looking uh, for those members uh, to continue to be uh, faithful and committed in your stewardship. And then those of you who may be watching this broadcast, we asked if you want to be a part uh, of this broadcast of this church in the way of in terms of giving. Uh, we ask that you would just log on to Giplify. Uh, you can either mail uh, your gift in. Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church, uh, 1930 Gallup Street here in Dallas, Texas, 75212. But members, we're asking you uh, to remember your obligations uh, and then continue to give God what belongs to Him. Let's not forget uh, our impact offering. Uh, that's $20 a month. Uh, amen. Uh, that's not much. $20 a month uh, for our impact offering. We took the place of all uh, annual day offerings and so way we do it here and so let me just say thank you for many of you being so faithful uh, so faithful in your giving uh, so faithful in your stewardship uh, many of you haven't even missed a beat uh, since this uh, pandemic uh, hit this uh, hit our world uh, our country and many of you have missed a beat being faithful to God and listen God honors faithfulness so when you faithful to God God will be faithful Amen to you. So we're asking you now to, to get out your, your phones. Uh, uh, if you need uh, someone to come by and pick up your, your offering, your tithes, uh, we pray that you let us know. Call uh, the office, 214-637-1019. Uh, we have deacons who are ready to come by and pick up uh, your gifts. Uh, we, we don't know uh, what the outcome is going to be. We're looking to hear from uh, Governor Albert uh, when he's going to release this stay uh, in place order. Uh, we know we be back here next week on the 27th because he's gonna not going to make a decision until after uh, the 27th of April. All right. uh, so next Sunday we'll be right back here uh, praying that uh, by Mother's Day says in tithes and in offering. He said, you are curse with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. I'll bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there might be meat in mine house. And prove me now, he which said to all of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. The Apostle Paul says, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered. This I say, he which sow it sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which sow it bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So let every man, according as he purposes it in his or her heart, let him give, not grudgingly or necessity. Why? Because God loveth a cheerful giver. And listen, my dears, when you give to God what is his, God will not sometime, almost, or maybe God will always take care of, of you. We thank you even now. Bless this offering. God, our Father, how we do thank you for these who have given today. Uh, bless now uh, their home, their heart, their health. And God, we ask that you continue to build a hedge around them. Uh, protect them from all hurt, harm, and danger. Uh, and we pray this offering to you for the purpose which you're giving for. In Jesus Christ, the marvelous, magnificent, and majestic name, we pray. Amen. 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 See you on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on Zoom. We're looking forward to our, our church members meeting us uh, for Bible study. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock uh, on Zoom. We'll send that link out to you for you to tune in uh, on, with us on Wednesday night for Zoom. Until then, may God bless you and may keep you as I pray.